Renegade Viego has been one of the best AP carries since the start of the set, and in this video I'll teach you how to master this comp by going over the build, what items and augments to take, how to play the early, mid, and late game, and then I'll go over some in-depth positioning examples. The end game board for this comp has 5 core units, Viego, Talon, Alistar, Aphelios, and Leona, which give you 4 Oxfors, 3 Renegade, and 2 Ages. Alistar and Leona provide great frontline and good CC, along with Aphelios, who you should always have Binding Eclipse on to provide Diego and Leona time to pick up kills. The most standard board is the 6 Ox Horse variant, with Annie and Fiora and another flex unit like Echo, Nunu, Fiddlesticks, or Janna. Extra Ox Horse provide us with frontline stall and attack speed for Apelios. If the lobby is heavily centered around AP, you should lean towards the Ages variant of the board, which adds in Bai, Echo, and a flex unit like Sejuani or Nunu. If you have extra 80 items, you can play Samira for 2 sure shots and either the Ages or 6 Ox Force frontline. With set 8 introducing hero augments, there are even more ways we can change up our comp. The best hero augments for this comp are usually the ones that already fit with the units we already have on the board. Hero augments are very volatile, so you always want to check the data and tier list videos to determine which is the best for the comp every single patch. In general, you should prioritize support augments of units already on your board to provide Viego more stats. The best ones include those of Leona, Viego, Talon, Camille, Fiora, Vi, Annie, and Alistar. The only good carry augments in this comp aside from Viego's are Alistar or Camille, if you want to do carry her with Viego. Between the two Viego augments, the support augment one is generally better, as it helps heal up your other units. Most importantly, Leona, and the carry one is less consistent because of the health threshold. Because of how important getting the right hero augment is for this comp, you should always try to save your reroll for 4 cost or 5 cost hero augments on stage 3-2 or 4-2, and make sure to tailor your boards on the previous rounds to ensure that you get the right choices. Aggressively reroll for Viego, Leona, and Aphelios' carry augments in particular, and don't settle for mediocre augments, as you usually get what you want tailored to your board. There are a ton of ways we can change our board based on other things like normal augments and items, but I'll talk more about that and what you add in at level 9 later in the video. But if you are a newer player, just pick one of the level 8 versions and only play that until you get more comfortable with the comp. Diego is our main carry, so we prioritize making items for him first. He has one core item, and that is Ionic Spark. Spark is amazing as it shreds magic resistance of all units Diego jumps on, allowing him to deal a ton of damage. His second item wants to be a healing item. Hodge and Gunblade are both good. Hodge is better if you lack damage on your Viego, while Gunblade is better if you have sufficient damage. BT is always worse than Hodge and Gunblade, but don't be afraid to slam it if you have no other good options. The third item should be a damage item. The two best options are JG and Deathcap. Both are good, but prioritize JG if you already have AP from your augments like Battle Mage or Stand United. Other decent options for damage items include Titans, Archangels, Giant Slayer, and Guardbreaker. After making items on Diego, you want to prioritize tank items on Leona. Leona's spell is amazing, as it can take out super tanks that Viego cannot deal with, like mechs and itemized Sejuani's and Zacks, but she dies pretty easily without any items. Her best items are Sunfire, Warmogs, and Redemption. Anti-heal is incredibly important in today's meta, while Warmogs is great because of its value on Leona 1-star. Redemption is amazing to heal Leona and your team, as your board is mostly clumped around the frontline. Other good items are Bramble, Dragon's Claw, Titans, and Stoneplate. Make whatever you can on her, as items for Viego are more important. If you have spare bows or swords, you should start making items for Aphelios. His best items are Last Whisper, while other good items include Deathblade, Hurricane, IE, Guardbreaker, Giant Slayer, and Hodge. Rageblade is pretty redundant, especially on 6 Oxforest boards, as you already have enough attack speed there, but make whatever items you can on him, as Aphelios is not the top priority in this comp. If you get a spatula, you want to make Renegade spat. This allows you to play 6 Renegade, which provides Viego a huge damage buff in the late game. Here is an example of boards for 6 Renegade, with Echo being a flex spot that can be Fiddlesticks, Janna, Urgot, or Nunu. The best holder of Renegade spat is Aphelios. If you can't make Renegade spat, then you should always make Oxforce spat, as it allows you to play 6 Oxforce while dropping Fiora or Annie for a flex unit. This spat should usually go on Leona if you hit her, as the extra stall will often allow her to cast on an important unit. The other good option is Samira if you have AD items, as it makes her a great secondary carry with bonus attack speed. The best non-hero augments for this comp are Renegade Heart or Crest, Oxforce Heart or Crest, Battle Mage, Celestial Blessing, Second Wind, Ban of Thieves, Thrill of the Hunt, 
Ancient Archives, Electro Charge, Luden's Echo, Jeweled Lotus, Preparation, Sunfire Board, Clear Mind, Trade Sector, Makeshift Armor, and Last Stand. I mentioned a lot of augments there, and the best ones out of those are Renegade Harder Crest, Oxforce Harder Crest, Battle Mage, Celestial Blessing, Ancient Archives, Electro Charge, and Luden's Echo. If all that info was a lot to take in, then check out the cheat sheet for this comp. It's available for patrons and YouTube members. Here is the quirky cheat sheet from last set, so you know what to expect for the Renegade Diego cheat sheet that is available right now. The carousel priority for this comp is Rod, Glove, Chain, then Belt. The best opener for this comp is 3 Renegade with 2 Oxfors, with Talon as your item holder for Diego. When you have this opener, try to hold on to extra talents if you can, so that you can replace them when moving items over to Viego later. Other good openers with this comp are any AP carries, like Star Guardian or Spellslinger Lux, Mascot Yumi, Duelist Gangplank or Yasuo, Underground Ezreal, Gadgetine Lulu, and Anima Squad Jinx. The best early slam for this comp are Ionic Spark, as it is Viego's only core item and keeps you flexible between every AP comp in the meta. Other good early game slams are Sunfire, Deathcap, JG, Warmogs, Gunblade, Hodge, and Bramble. Generally, you should avoid pre-leveling on 2-1, because you want to hit Silas and Talon 2-star for the Renegade board, or Lulu or Lux 2-star to try and win streak with a strong early AP opener. From there, your early game strategy will depend a lot on how good your opener is. In some games you play for a loss streak, and in some games you play for a win streak. And if you want to learn more about how to play the early game, then check out my guide where I go in-depth on that subject. After the Krugs round, you should have more direction towards a comp, and the general requirements to play Viego is to have at least Spark, JG, Deathcap, or an healing item slammed, and another component for another Viego item. You always want to hold onto Viego and Alistar during the mid game if you're not playing them, and you want to hold onto the other units as well if you don't lose Eco for holding them. If you are weak in the mid game, you have two options. You can either roll level 6 or level 7 to stabilize and stop the bleeding. Rolling early to stabilize is usually really good with this comp as the Talon, Camille, and Silas board falls off quickly without good items and 2-star everything. You should usually roll at level 6 if you are 60 HP or lower, or 70 HP if your board is weak. You should do this on stage 3-2 and aim for this board with Talon 2-star and multiple other 2-stars. Here is another board with Yumi carry that can also work around the mid game, but any AP carry will do, so don't tunnel on Renegade units. If you roll at level 7 instead, you can do this on either stage 3-5 or 4-1. Which you pick depends on how much HP and gold you have. When rolling at level 7, you want to aim for a board like this, where you stabilize off a of Viego 1 star and an upgraded frontline with units like Alistar, Bai, Sajuani, Ramus, Cho'Gath, and Zac. During the mid game, it's also important to scout, so we can see how many other people are playing Viego. This comp can support 2 to 3 people, so if you see more than that going for it, then consider pivoting into another comp like Spellslayer Trilia or a flex board with MF or Aesol carry. On stage 4-1, you want to be level 7, and from here you have two different options. You can either roll level 7, or you can go for a fast 8 and roll there. With this comp, it's much better to roll level 8, because our carry is a 4 cost unit that needs to be 2 starred, and we also need legendary units to spike our comp. The games where you roll level 7 are when you're 60 to 50 HP or lower, you're lost streaking, you cannot go level 8 on stage 4-2 with 30 or more gold next turn, or if a lot of other players are rolling down here as well. In most games in set 8, you should be rolling at level 7 to stabilize, as the tempo during stage 4 is incredibly high. This is because reroll comps start 3 starring their units here, and player damage has been increased from previous sets. When rolling, try to stay about 10 gold so that you can go to level 8 on stage 5-1, or else we will never get our legendary units. If you manage to hit a strong board without rolling too much, you should aim to go level 8 on stage 4-5, otherwise you should go level 8 on 5-1 and roll for the rest of your comp there. If you end up going for a fast 8, you should roll for a board like this, if there are a lot of AP comps in the lobby. If you can manage to 2 star frontline units like Zac, Ramus, or Cho'Gath, they can work in either comp as well, and Fiddle and Urgot are good splash units in for CC. If you hit a Renegade spot, you should look to play towards this board when you hit Leona. This provides a ton of damage to both Viego and your whole team, so always play for this if you can. If you hit an Ox for a spat, you have three options. The first one is to put the spat on Leona or Echo, and play the standard 6 Ox Force board, and drop Fiora or Annie for a flex unit. Nunu is usually the best flex unit for 2 mascot, Vi is great against AP comps, and generally good CC or tank units like Urgot, Fiddlestick, Zac, and Sejuani are fine as well. You can also add in Sivir or Samira, but I would avoid doing this if you don't have AD items for Samira or Aphelios. Your second option is to put the spat on Samira and play her as a secondary carry if you have items for her. 
where you want to roll for both Diego and Samira 2 star and Aphelios at level 8. Do this if you have extra sword and bow items like Hurricane, Deathblade, Last Whisper, and Ai. The Ox Force Bat gives Samira a lot of attack speed already, and since she is relying on her spell to do damage, the extra attack speed is unnecessary. If you have spare attack speed items like Rageblade or other utility items like Edge of Night or Titans, then you should always play Zed as a secondary carry with this board. Most of the time, your hero augment will be for a unit you already play on your board, but in the times where you have one for units like Vel'Koz, Ramus, or God, or another unit, then you can generally just replace the flex unit like Echo, Nunu, or Fiddlesticks that I mentioned on each board with a unit for your hero augment. Once you hit your board at level 8 and you are ahead of tempo, you have two options from there. The first one is to roll for 3 star Diego. This strategy is very risky, so I would only do this if you're uncontested, you have a lot of gold after you hit your entire board 2 star on your first level 8 rolldown, and you have found at least 5 copies of Diego already. From there, make sure to slow roll above 50 gold for as long as you can, then roll down to 0 gold once you get low on HP. Generally though, this is not recommended, as going to level 9 is a much safer way to improve your board. If you go to level 9, you should just add in an extra flex unit like Nunu, Urgot, Fiddlesix, Janna, Bai, Aesol, Mordekaiser, or another Viego 2 star. Play Mordekaiser if you don't have Spark or a Static Shiv, and Aesol if you don't have Sunfire or Morello, and you need Anti-Heal. Janna is amazing if the weather is windy, mediocre if the weather is sunny, and bad if the weather is rainy. In general, you should just play whichever legendary unit you 2 star, but windy weather Janna and Fiddlesticks are usually the best. We, we put Viego on the second row to make sure he's never aggroed first, and in the middle to make sure he doesn't take damage from cornered backline carries. We place Leona and Alistar on either side of Diego, as they are our main tanks and protect Diego the best. Talon can be placed on either on the front lines or second row, but we want him to use his ult, then die to proc the Renegade bonus damage for Diego. Now let's get into some in-depth positioning examples against popular comps. Against the first guy, the big threat is Talia. When the fight starts, Fiora should wrap around the Echo, Talon and Alistar should wrap towards the opposing Alistar and Yumi, the Viego should walk up towards the Alistar while avoiding being CC'd by him, and Anunu will aggro towards the Tilia. Because the Fiora is wrapping, the Tilia will ult her, Fiddlesticks, Annie, and Nunu, who should all be clumped around the Echo, keeping our Viego, Leona, and Aphelio safe. The Leona is ulting the Annie, who is usually the main tank. We don't care about putting Viego in front of the Urgot, as he will ult before Urgot and jump away. Against the second guy, the big threat is Yumi. Yumi ults her furthest target within 5 hexes, so we put Aphelios on the opposite side to keep him safe. We put our Ox Force units on the edges of our boards to eat the Yumi's ults. And our strongest one, Alistar, next to Leona to keep her safe, as she is the most important unit for this matchup. Leona is positioned in the front of the Galio, who is usually the main tank. Diego should be directly in front of the Yumi, and keep him as close as possible so that he doesn't get ulted. Against the third guy, the big threats are Zed and Bane. Ideally, we want to position our Aphelios on the opposite side of Zed, but this often ends up being a 50-50, so we put him on the third row and corner Alistar behind him to catch the Zed and ult him. Leona is once again positioned in front of the main tank. Sejuani and Fiddlesticks are positioned to take the aggro from Bane and ult as early as possible. Fiora and Annie are positioned in front of the Bane to take the aggro from Leona and Viego. Thank you so much for watching, if you learned something, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. If you want cheat sheets for adding my comp guides, they're available for YouTube members and patrons, and links to those are down in the description. And if you want to get better at TFT, join the Discord, we got over 9,000 other players there who are hungry to climb. And if you want to get coached by me, the information is over on the Discord server as well. So take care, and see you in the next video.